So now that we spent some time really exploring ratios and proportions and really understanding what they are, we're going to get into a lot more of how they're used. Uh, the first example we're going to see today is something called a unit rate. We're also going to look into unit prices, um, which is something you use uh, and your parents use quite a bit. In fact, you've probably done it. You've probably used something like this before. Just a bit of a review here, very short. Uh, recall this vocabulary that a ratio is a comparison of two quantities. That word comparison, as soon as you see ratio, you should think comparison. Like for instance, 90 to 3. That's great, but in real life, a lot of times we have labels that we put with these numbers 90 and 3 that make it a lot more meaningful. So a rate is when I have two different labels that I'm comparing. For instance, if I take the comparison 90 miles to 3 hours, that tells me a distance that I traveled in a certain amount of time. So that's a comparison that tells me how fast I went. Now, that's all well and good. However, <clears throat> that's not usually how we measure time right? or how we measure speed. We measure speed in miles per hour. Notice that the hour is singular. So it's great to know that I went 90 miles in three hours. However, what I really want to know is how far do I go in one hour? Like when I go out to, to Indiana to visit my parents, uh, we drive 425 miles. Now, that takes me about you know anywhere from seven to eight hours, but if I really want to know how fast I'm going, I need to, I need to make that into something called a unit rate. Um, the definition for a unit rate you see here is a rate where the first quantity is compared to one of the second quantities. So that's what we're talking about. Not just 90 miles in three hours, how many miles do I go in one hour? Again, that word compared is very important here. Well, to do this, to make the denominator be 1, I just need to divide top and bottom by 3, and I get 30 miles in one hour. Um, just a quick note. For ratios, it's OK when we're talking about ratios since it is real life. We do kind of allow us to have decimals, uh, especially when we get into unit rates. So let's take a look at the second example down here. I have here uh, Mo Farah, who's from Great Britain. He uh, won the the 5,000 meter event um, in the 2012 Olympics. Uh, he ran in 12 minutes, 57.94 seconds. Now, if I ask who runs faster, me or Mo Farah, well, what I have right here is not going to be a straight comparison, right? I say that he runs 5,000 meters and takes 12 minutes. Well, I run 100 meters and I take 13 seconds. That's an estimate. Um, so who runs faster? Well, it doesn't do me really any good to look at the rate, just to compare distance to time, because we're running different distances. So it's not fair to compare uh, to, to say that I run faster or he runs faster. What we have to do is we have to look at the unit rate. Who runs the most meters in one second? That's going to be a little bit more uh, useful to us. So just one thing we are going to have to do here. Notice he runs in minutes and I run in seconds. We're going to have to convert his time into all seconds. It's very easy. 12 minutes is 720 seconds. I'll add that 57.94 on here. So let's go ahead and line up these decimals here. And I find that his total time in seconds is 777.94 seconds. So that's how, how long it took him to run 5,000 meters. So. To do this, we're going to first start with just the rate, because that's the information we have. The rate here is 5,000 meters to that time that I just came up with. That's for Mo Farah, the Olympic gold medalist. For me, I'm doing 100 meters in 13 seconds. Again, not a fair comparison. It's total, two totally different amounts of times, two totally different uh, meters. We have to have something common here. What we're going to do is we're going to do a unit rate because that gives us a common denominator. The common denominator here being one second. That's kind of like when you compare fractions, right? In order to compare fractions, you can't compare fractions when they have different denominators. Notice here to get the denominators to be one, I just have to divide by what's in the denominator. So for me, I'm divided by 13. So I'm going to divide top and bottom. Remember, if I only divide the bottom, it doesn't keep the ratio the same. I think you had an equivalent ratio here. There's that term again, equivalent ratio. I'm going to need a calculator for this. 100 divided by 13 gives me 7.69 meters. So in one second, I'm running 7.69 meters. In one second, I should say. All right, for Mo, I'm going to divide top and bottom by 777 seconds with the decimals. 
Again, divide top and bottom. If I only divide the bottom, it's not the same ratio. So I get the calculator out again, do 5,000 divided by that decimal there. And I get 6.43 seconds, 6.42, 6.43. And now, so you see, it's a question of who runs faster. Now we both have the same amount of time. But I'm running faster because I go further in one second. My speed is higher. I run uh, about 8 meters per second. He's running about 6. In all fairness, he's running a lot further, so he has to pace himself. So I can't really say I'm faster than an Olympian, but I'm going to anyway. All right, so next, let's look at unit price. Unit price is extremely useful. Use this all the time uh, when you're trying to figure out what to buy. Probably use this in my holiday shopping. A unit rate that compares the amount it costs for one thing that you're buying. A lot of times, you know, they throw in these, these large amounts of things that you can buy, especially if you go to Sam's Club or Costco, um, but it's not very useful unless you figure out what it costs per one of those items. So here we're just going to look at a couple examples, and we're going to look at a real-life example of chicken nuggets. Uh, here I've got pens that I'm going to buy. I can either buy a five-pack or a 15-pack. Five packs $1.95, I could pay more and get 15 pens instead of five pens. So let's start by setting up the rate just like we did before. Notice I need labels on everything, even the five. I need to know what I'm buying. So you have to have labels on every number here, and I will be picky with that. Um, so I have either that or I have 620 for 15 pens. I'm going to divide uh, by the bot whatever the bottom number is because that's going to give me one pen. So for the 15 pack, I'm going to pay uh, about 41 cents for one pen. Now for the five pack, I'm going to divide top and bottom by five, and that's going to come out to 39 cents for one pen. So that is, it is cheaper if I bought only five. And you might say, well, what if I need 15 pens? Well, then it's cheaper for you to buy three of the five packs than to buy one of the 15 packs because it's two cents cheaper for every for every pen. So it's going to save you a little bit of money over the long haul. Again, yeah, two cents, not a big deal, but uh, just to show you how these unit rates work. Our right, next example, we're going to look, instead of like items, we're going to look at ounces that we buy. Food and drink a lot of times deal with ounces. So here we have, for Jamie, she can either buy a 20-ounce jar of peanut butter, I'm sorry, 15-ounce for 219, or she can buy a 20-ounce jar for 278. So I'm setting up my rates, putting labels on everything, keep the ounces in there, keep the dollar signs on everything. That way we know what we're paying, whether euros, dollars, whatever. And we know that it's money we're giving here. And then I'm just going to divide 219 divided by 15. And that gives me, uh, I'm going to leave the thousands place here, 0.146 dollars for one ounce. All right, for the other one, 278 divided by 20. And we get 0.139 for one ounce. So notice buying 20 ounces, this time buying more is a little bit more cost effective. If I round that, it's 15 cents for the 15 ounces or 14 cents for the 20 ounce. It's a little bit better deal. All right, Chick-fil-A versus McDonald's. Now, Chick-fil-A, these are actual prices found online. Chick-fil-A, you can pay $4.39 and get a 12-piece chicken nuggets. Or McDonald's, you can pay $4.99 and get 20 pieces from their value menu. So it's the same process every time. Money over what you're buying. Remember, a unit price, we're going to look at what you're paying for each of those items or for each of those units. And then I divide it out. Notice Chick-fil-A is going to be 37 cents for one chicken nugget, for one piece. McDonald's, on the other hand, I'll do $4.99 divided by 20. And that's going to be $0.25 cents for one piece. So McDonald's is less expensive. Uh, but then I guess that gets to the whole idea of you get what you pay for. Uh, so you have to decide then, is it worth it to pay more for your chicken nuggets or whatever? That's a whole different discussion, not related to math as much. Um, 
All right, so you have a quick check to do there. You've got, uh, we've got the basics, and then we've got a couple uh, neat applications that are going to explore this concept of unit rates in greater depth. Good luck.